And that's up at KHOW.com. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please say good morning and welcome back. And she took so much abuse for doing the story initially. Julie Hayden from Fox on the killing of Tom Clements, the tie to Al Turkey, the Saudi Arabian, and Evan, e- e- Evan Ebel, the, the murderer himself. And Julie, you've got to feel a little bit better about your hard work. Good morning. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Peter, and thanks Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's a great article by the Denver Post. And, yep. and, yeah, thank you. I mean, that's what we started reporting the very next day at Fox 31 News, that, you know, while the investigation is ongoing, one of the things that they're looking very hard at is that the connection, um, the, the possible connection with this uh, Saudi guy who's being held in Colorado prison. Um, and, you know, as we reported at the very beginning, the Joint uh, Terrorism Task Force, the FBI, was in it from the beginning. And we now know uh, from the Denver Post story that um, they were, you know, this was something they were looking at within an hour of the murder. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's one of those things I think sometimes people have a hard time believing it because it is so bizarre. It's like a movie or something. But, you know, shoot, we all know sometimes real life beats any oh. kind of movie plot somebody could ever dream up. Also, please say good morning, and he is the man, ladies and gentlemen. You talk about somebody that's about half tough. Former Congressman Tom Tancredo, when this happened, Tom came rushing into the studio and said, here we go, we got one. Thomas, good morning. Congressman, good morning. Welcome back to the show. Good morning, Peter. What are your thoughts about this? And you take it into a little more depth because you've really done some work like Julie has as well. Well, I'd like to say that I was totally responsible for it, but, of course, it is my chief of staff who, what well, my former chief of staff, Mike Max Zimmerman, who now runs a great little online thing called Colorado Observer. He's the one that called me originally and said, hey, look, it's back. They're, they're trying to get Al Turkey out again. And he reminded me that back in 2006, the same thing was going on, that the State Department was pressuring the um, governor at the time, Bill Owens, to let Al Turkey go because the Saudis wanted him out. Um, and the um, apparently it got to the point where um, we actually sent uh, our attorney general and someone from, uh, apparently someone from Bill Owens' staff, to Saudi Arabia to explain it, to placate, who knows why, but it's a, a weird thing. And, and when we saw that originally, we started raising hell. I, I started writing letters to people. And I was still in Congress at the time, and I, I was asking why they were doing this and, and certainly encouraged them not to let this guy out. And, um, and it sort of died out after a while. When we raised enough noise about it, we didn't hear much more about it and essentially forgot about it. And then everything started to bust loose when Clements was killed. And everybody in the state of Colorado who had anything to do with the Al Turkey case was immediately given protection. So they knew. And then we found out that the Saudis in the United States signed some sort of agreement in 2011 that was a prisoner exchange agreement, and it was essentially to get this guy out and back to Saudi Arabia. Then we found that there was a memo from the State Department um, recounting a, a conversation between, the, uh, between an American official, I don't remember if it was the ambassador or somebody in the embassy, and a Saudi official, in which the Saudi official must have threatened uh, some, something because the, um, the embassy official, the American, reported that if we did not let Al Turkey go, we could probably expect some sort of terrorist activity in the United States. That was a WikiLeaks memo. They, they, they found it and published it. Um, so we just were putting all the, the uh, uh, little dots together, and it did seem to us anyway that there was something here that was yeah. – and, and the fact that – now the one thing we did not know, and that was in this story today – was the, that apparently Clements had agreed to let him go. Yeah. According to his, he, he left a message or, or talked to the governor's chief of staff and said, yeah, I'm going to sign it tomorrow. Well, then, again, Mac Zimmerman at the Colorado Observer, he, he starts printing this stuff, and I do not know if there's a connection. I cannot say that, indeed, because Mac was writing this, that – uh, a decision was made not to let him go because we were once again sort of shining light on this. But all I know is then the next thing, he was, the, the, there was a decision not to. And you have to ask yourself, what 
was if that if this isn't why he was killed, if this whole thing, if the Saudis didn't hire evil to do this, uh, and the 211 gang, mm-hmm. why was he killed? That's what right. did evil have against this guy? I mean, what's the purpose? Well, and Peter, and this is Julian, right. and Tom, you know, exactly how everything you said is the kind of stuff that we've been reporting, too. And, uh, you know, to, to add to that, um, this is what my sources tell me what happened, that, that as you said, that Clements had signed the letter, uh, you know, and the way it was put to me is, you know, the plane engines were revving up. I mean, they were all, but, I mean, I believe even, like, orders were being signed to move him and things like that because the way I understand it, it's sort of a complicated technical State Department thing, so you don't just, like, you know, walk out of a Colorado prison and get on a plane and fly back to Saudi Arabia. All of that was in motion, and one of my sources indicated that what also may have happened, partly public pressure, but also, you know, the FBI becomes aware of this uh-huh. and, and says, hey, we can't let this guy go. I mean, the FBI still believes that he has terrorist connections, now that we've never charged with that. They were um, looking at that what, before they ever right. looking at him for the sexual assault charge. Exactly. That's what started the whole thing. And my sources indicate that the, the FBI, this kind of like Tom said, everybody kind of dropped off of everybody's radar here, you know, in Denver. Um, but the FBI became aware of this and said, we can't let this guy go. Um, and, and, and keep in mind that the former uh, head of the FBI, Jim Davis, is now the director of the, the head of the FBI in Denver, I guess, is now the head of the Colorado Department of Public Safety. So he certainly, you know, is up to speed on the whole thing. And that's, I think, what happened, that all of a sudden then, and I think that's why, at least sources indicate to me, you know, the Saudis were apparently just outraged about this, that this is almost a done deal, his family's getting ready to welcome him home. And then at the last second, boom, Clements cuts it off. Which also um, means, Julie... Uh, agreed. I mean, <laughs> absolutely right in everything you, you say. And it's, but doesn't that tell you something about the fact that about the the governor's involvement? The governor had must have okayed this, or else it never right. could have gotten to that point. Exactly. I mean, keep in mind, like you said, Clements is is new, and and I mean, the, it's my understanding they've been working with the governor's office all along. And the way we got involved in the case is people were starting to get upset. I mean, people, I think, who had worked on the initial investigation were upset because they were hearing through the governor's office that there was this deal in the works. Um, and, you know, and I think we all saw the governor's, um, I don't know, I mean, not that what, it was terrible what happened to Tom Clements, but I think everybody commented on the governor. He seemed to take it extremely personally. Yeah, um, absolutely. That news conference was unusual, I think, in the governor's and, and the emotion that he was displaying there. And when he answered the que- tried to answer the question up in Grand Junction that was posed to him by a friend of mine, and, right. and, and, you know, Governor, uh, in, the, in memory of Tom Clements, who was your friend, you're, you're certainly not going to let this Al Turkey guy mm-hmm. out, are you? When you read what he, we, we've got it we, on, on Congressman Tom Tancredo.com, we have the transcript. We have his actual statement. And Julie, he's either, I don't know, I want to say <laughs> drunk, or, or he's completely, he's so flustered by it, he goes on for about yeah. two or three minutes in a completely convoluted attempt to answer the question. Never does. Never says, no, I won't let him go. Starts talking about Sharia law. Yeah. Starts talking about difference yeah. in cultures. Yeah. And at the end, he actually says, well, this was a half-assed answer, wasn't yeah. it? That was... But here, here's, here's one. We're right at the break. And my favorite lawyer in Denver, hor- oh, yeah. horrible <laughs> Hal Haddon, the Ramsey's lawyer, John and Patsy are innocent, hangs up on me. He says, this is classic. He Talking about all Turkey, Hal, please, at long last. He is not a man of great means. He was a Ph.D. candidate at the University of Colorado. He also had a servant. <laughs> I mean, all right, show of hands. Dan Crater, you got a servant? Uh, Hayden, My wife Hayden, thinks so. Hey, Hayden, no, Chuck, you, you, I, I am the servant. All right. Uh, 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 Mike, do you guys have a servant? We have never had a servant. We come from the servant class. Yeah. You've got to love Haddon. Haddon is like one of the great smokescreen artists of our time. How? I know your friends listen to the show and they tell you, but you've got to clean it up a little bit, bud. He's been in well, prison. Uh, anybody, he's, if Al hadn't really believed this guy didn't have any money, yeah. oh, yeah. I don't that, think that, that was my next point. Case. That was my next point. This guy. I can't imagine Al Haddon's working for free. No, he's I a... guarantee you that. And by the way, isn't it true that El Turkey's family is like some hot dogs and back in the desert, in the desert kingdom, they got some bucks? 
Yeah, oh. they, yeah. they have connections to the Saudi family. That's right. all we were. That's close enough for government work. <laughs> Hi, yeah. How's it? How's there about everybody's yeah. Hey, how? I know you're doing this for free, buddy, right? Yeah. Yeah, that,